help her. All right, let's get going on rebuilding this Ford engine. Um, if you guys haven't seen the video before, I'll put a link to it up top here, and that's gonna show you guys kind of where we tore it down, saw what was needed with it, and also told you what we're gonna do with it. The engine has completely been gone through. Um, got the block cleaned up, got it re-sleeved, got the crank ground, got the head th gone through, and we also have a full-on rebuild kit that we're gonna put in this thing. So I'm pretty excited to get into it. Um, I haven't rebuilt too many engines like this before, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, so the first thing we gotta do is get this cam in. Um, you can kind of see this is the back access. Uh, we've got all our lifters we gotta put in and whatnot. Uh, There's a little plate under here that holds your cam on. I think these are the bolts. It's been a minute. Next, we got a little gear over here. So this is what drives the pump for our live hydraulics. So they say they want it like 7 thousandths of any play. All right, point zero 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 one. So we got five thou. Good to go on that. This one. Uh, okay. No. somewhere. So our seal goes with that lip towards the inside of the engine. So they say to soak these in engine oil for a half hour. So we've got our main bearing set and that's 20 because again we had the crank ground right Middle one is gonna be our thrust bearing. You can see it's got big thrust on both sides. Right to, let's see, this one's right. So 
So by 20 under what they mean or 20,000 main bearing status, this is actually like 10 thousandths thicker. Um, so that's 10 per side, 20 in the overall diameter. So that's just when we grind that crank down, we make up the extra material with the main bearings here. Sling of the unit. Okay. There's a mark there and a mark there. <sighs> One more tooth. There we go. So see now the two marks line up. Beautiful there, that's nice and true. This was the one that was damaged here, the center one. It really looks pretty good. Um, you know, I, I can tell it's running true. You can see maybe right here, it's a little off, but back looks great here. Uh, no concerns there. And then, so you can see on the, this is number two piston, was in rough shape on the crank, you know, but he's, the guy at the shop wasn't concerned about it. I said, you know, is it out of normal what you guys have seen? He said, no, it doesn't concern me at all. So I think we're good. So what they give you is these two little oil soaking and swelling like ribs here, whatever. You just drive them down and then you cut them off just a little over flush. Some guys don't like this. Um, I have no idea. Never done a Ford tractor before. We did a Jubilee with a cracked block before, put it all together. Even though I don't think we did quite, I have to ask my dad, I don't think we did quite this level of rebuild on it. Um, we got the block welded, my buddy's dad welded it for us, put a bunch of time into it, painted it, put it back together, and it started leaking oil and antifreeze everywhere. So it still sits halfway done. Um, but so to get these to seal, you just dip these in a little bit of oil and then just drive them in with a the hammer. So we'll do that. Um, some guys say don't dip them in oil, which maybe would be smart. You can definitely see there's a big gap right there. Work. So what do you think? That's pretty hard already. I'm thinking we should put these in, um, and then we'll drip some diesel fuel on them to get them to swell. People were saying online too. God, I hate that. Yeah, this is horrible. People are saying online too, it might just take a while for them to swell up and work. Oh God. I guess I'm gonna have to order a different seal. side goes up. This looks pretty symmetrical to me. Although it is like a cast iron that thing's stiff. One thing I forgot. 
got, which I always do. Let's check our clearance. There's a razor blade, 22 thick, and we want 10 and 20, so we're probably right in the middle. You know, on an engine like this, when you have sleeves to size and everything, um, brand new sleeves, brand new pistons, brand new rings, I would rarely expect to have to file that, right? Whew. It is snug. So make sure that these two ends aren't overlapped, you know, you can get them in. Probably poorly assembled piston. <laughs> I was looking at that man. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot going on here, but should work. So on these connecting rods, there's a tiny oiling hole as you see right there. So what you want is you want, you see on the piston it says front. If that's facing towards the front, the oil hole is supposed to be, you know, towards me on the right. C minus. All right, one out of four is done. So let me put those other four together and then we'll come back and we will start installing them. All right, so the good news is I got the pistons and rings together. No issues there. Um, I'd have to read the instructions a couple times. Just pay attention if you guys are ever doing that. They spell it out pretty clear for you. Bad news is um, I think I'm getting ready to take the crank out and either gonna get a used one and get it ground or see if I can get this one spray welded and fixed. And this is nothing new. We've known about this for a while. We've had this imperfection here in the crank. Um, originally it was, you know, kind of this up in here, right there, and then that as well. And then if we spin it a little bit, we've also got that down there that's kind of ground out a little bit, you know. So after I installed the crank, I was looking at it and I noticed what looked like flash or really thin up here, right? So I said, huh. So I took a razor blade and kind of picked it out and then I exposed basically, you can kind of see what I exposed all the way up in here. So got me thinking, um, talked to some people, some really intelligent people, you know, that have seen a lot of engines and I don't, I, well, bottom line is I don't want to risk it. I mean, time is my most precious resource as I go forward, you know. Um, and I just don't want to be doing this thing again. I don't want to take the crank out. Um, so I'm going to look around and see if I can get someone to actually fix this crank. If not, I mean, used cranks are out there from, you know, 150 to $400. I can just get a used crank and then probably get that one ground. Again. I'm not really worried about like structural issues with it. Um, I think it's big enough. It's going to be fine. Um, it's just, 
I don't want anything to come loose. I mean, if I'm still seeing stuff come loose, I don't want anything to come loose and snag a bearing. And if I spin a, a rod bearing, I'm literally just in the same situation that I'm in right now. Again, pulling the engine, getting the crank and stuff. So I think we probably just gotta take our medicine and do this one right. Um, bummer. So let's figure out a crank and we'll come back and wrap this baby up. All right, so in a weird turn of events, I'm gonna find myself with two crankshafts here. This one is brand new, probably made overseas somewhere. I don't think it's gonna tell me. Um, and this should be, you know, a good crank for the diesels. Um, so the concern is, is these diesels have suspect cranks to begin with. I basically picked the worst tractor I probably could have picked, you know, cause sometimes people have trouble keeping these together. I really kind of want to give this a look over with a fine tooth comb here to see if this is something we feel comfortable running or not. So, it looks cast, a bunch of dings on it down here. I don't know. I mean, you guys probably understand it too. It's just like one of those things where it's like, well, don't want to do it twice. And I cannot find a single person online that said they've run one of these used crank or these new cranks and it's been okay. Definitely way more impressed with the original crank on this guy. So let's take a look at the used one I got. In a weird series of event, events, I have ended up with three crankshafts. So this is one I found on eBay, um, just a, a good used one. So the first thing is this thing definitely had rod bearing issues too. Like this one would need to be ground. I can feel that, um, those scars in there are pretty deep. The main looks so-so, but I can feel it's worn. That one's got a nice scratch in it, back there. So, I mean, it's fine. Um, definitely looks like the original crank. Just kind of feels like it, it sounds like it. So one thing, look at that parting line there. You can notice it's very wide throughout the whole thing. And on the other one, it is not. Not easy work on old stuff like this. Every time I get into old engines like this, it's just like, why? <laughs> why do I do this to myself? All right, it's like I'm two months later, uh, the crank, the used crank, second crank, is down at the machine shop. We're going to pick it up. Taking mom and baby out for a ride, get them out of the house. Maybe get a beer or something. We are in Ann Arbor, Michigan, of all places. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. That looks a lot better. Tastes good. I got some new old stock bearings off eBay. Perfect Circle Dana, I guess, used to make them back in the day. They look pretty good. I'm kind of excited about these. You can tell they're a little different. And these are 10 under for the new, new crank. Ouch. 
What do they say? Third time's a charm, huh? Sounds good, feels nice. So if you guys remember when we put these pistons together, there's a little oil hole. So you can just see that hole in the bearing lines up with there. And then, you know, the crank oils that, and then this squirts at the cam. When we put this in, we did everything right. Then with front of the motor, which is that way, that oil hole will be on our cam side. So exactly what we have. This part. All right. I'm going to leave it there at the top because I don't want to damage that journal. Ends up with the oil hole. Crank is down all the way. Pistons down. Okay.
just strip that bolt. Nuts toast. <laughs> wow. This thing is like the thing that keeps giving. If you ever think you're getting a good deal because you're buying a non-running tractor um, for basically the price of scrap, you're not getting a good deal, I promise you. So we snap the bolt, right? And we strip the nut on the other one. So I'm not even sure. Like the one that I stripped the nut on, we maybe could run. But I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that. They don't make these bolts anymore. So what a lot of people do is they'll use ARP bolts, but you have to get, you have to send this back to the machine shop, all the rods and get it drilled out like three thousands over so we can put the ARP in. So I really don't want to do that. Um, there is like some new old stock for like, 10 or 15 dollars i can find five of them on ebay if you want to order it from somewhere else it's like a hundred dollars a piece for these bolts so let's torque the rest of them down see how bad it is these two right here torque down great i don't have an issue with those and i don't think i need to replace them as long as they feel like they torque down good right i don't know if someone over torqued those others before or what um so let's See if they hit the wall and we torque them down and then we'll have to try and find some more freaking bolts. <laughs> like you can feel it, these ones. You know, they hit the wall. And they tighten right down, see that? I mean, 40 foot pounds right away. Those other ones, like it just would not hit the wall. Just kept going and going. I could tell it was gonna be a problem, you know? All right, so I got everything torqued down. I did add some Loctite too, cause they said not to use those little Paul nuts that go in there anymore. Um, I'll work on this week finding another bolt and nut or two for this one. Um, but for now, that's just temporary. So. After those rod bolts, I don't want to strip my crank out, you know. Because that would be a freaking disaster. Alright, there we go. So this is just a pilot bearing that goes in this bore right here. And it supports the end of the shaft here. So you can see that's loose. Then that's all supported on both sides. So now we can put our clutch on. The old clutch was not that bad, but I just, you gotta split the tractor if you gotta replace this. I don't really wanna do that. Take a look here. There's two clutches in here. I've kind of gone over that before. So basically what happens is the throttle bearing pushes down on the first clutch and that disengages one of the clutches. Um, and that allows you to shift gears and stuff like that. So it takes power away from the axle. 
And the second one down here, if you push further, it disengages the PTO. So what that allows you to do is just to have like a live PTO, they call it. So if you're brush hogging or rototilling or something like that, you can kind of be on and off the clutch, forward and reverse a little bit without having to stop that big rotating mass every time. So it's pretty slick. Um, you know, this was way back in the day before they had hydro and shuttle shift and stuff. All right, so I think I got it ready to go back on. Remember, we still got to do the one rod bolts underneath, but we can access that when the engine's on the tractor. Basically, we had to get this back end all done. So I think we should go ahead and drop it on, just because that's kind of like a milestone for me personally. It'll clear up the bench, and then we can kind of get into the fuel injection pump, which I want to rebuild. Um, we'll do a separate video on that, just because people you know, might want to follow that. Um, but once we get the engine on there, then we can go ahead, button up the bottom, we got the oil stuff to put on, pan, and then we can button up the top by putting the head on. So let's go, I need some muscle for this, so the neighbor's got a little like 1025 John Deere, uh, way more fun than a cherry picker. So let's see if we can go borrow that um, and throw this baby on. Okay, hey, no, give. Cooper, come on, get it, come on. <coughs> okay, give, ah, hit the wire. All right, one more try. Hey, give. Okay, Cooper, ready? Okay, ready? <laughs> he's done, he's tired. thing's the stupidest little tractor, but it just makes me smile every time. It's hilarious. I still enjoy running it. Make sure that engine's not tipping us over. Um, so real quick, let's check and see. I want to make sure the clutch works because that would be a disaster if it didn't, right? Let me put it in neutral. Okay. So I can spin that. Let's put it in gear. And I can still spin that. Now if we let off the clutch, without spinning the engine over. And I cannot. Okay. I think our clutch is good. Now we can get on to putting the rest of the motor together. Got all kinds of stuff, but it's progress, man. I think I took it off. I took it off in December, the motor, so it's June now. It's been a while since I've seen a motor on this thing. It's kind of neat. Sweet. Let's get back to work.
sold a 75 first. One head bolt left with those. All right, so found a couple studs finally on eBay. Um, so let's replace this one that needs it. Forty-five to fifty. There's fifty. So this is our oil feed line. This goes from the pump over to basically just all the galleys in the block. And then I'm guessing this goes through here. This is our oil suction. There's just like a, there's a little screen on the drain plug that you guys will see probably in a later video um, that this oil suction sucks through. Let me torque it all down. And everyone's happy, we can put our oil pan on finally. Ooh, all right. I think that is it. So the major engine components are assembled. Rotating assembly, everything else. So that's pretty cool. Last time I was messing with the oil pan, I was taking it off in the hopes that the drive shaft that spins the oil pan was sheared. And clearly that was not the case. This is a good day, just took me a while to get here. So I'm gonna end this one here. There's obviously a lot um, in this video, but I think it's pretty cool. Like I said, kind of a milestone. Got to here, took me a while. Next thing I'm gonna do on this is I'm actually gonna paint it up. Um, we'll probably do a separate video just on painting it. We'll go through, get everything looking kind of nice, um, and then Probably after that, we'll go through and we'll assemble, finish assembling the major components um, and hopefully give it a test fire, see if it works. I'm pretty excited. It should be a good tractor, hopefully, for the rest of my life. Um, I'm a little nervous. I hope I keep a crank in the thing, um, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, right? I'm also going to do another video on rebuilding the injection pump and the injectors, like I said. Um, that's just... Kind of a good reference for people out there that want to do that stuff. If you just want to reseal it, that's kind of cool to see. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, appreciate all the support. Um, it really does mean a lot to us. Believe it or not, I do actually read like every single one of the comments that gets posted. So if you got any advice, you just want to say hi, um, want to talk about anything, drop a comment down below, and I will definitely check it out. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'm going to go start tearing down this. D333 on the trailer right there because I think the neighbor's going to want his trailer back pretty soon. Um, 
that's pretty cool. That should be a good rebuild candidate for one of the 977s. So look out for that one too. For now, thanks, and we will see you next time. Oh. Evil. There's no way. I think the oil pan gasket has a specific way it can go. Uh, Remember that, guys. There's a specific way This gasket goes on.